Welcome to Malifaux Mondays from the Dice Gods. My name is Hydra, and today we are going to be talking about the three things that all newbies need to know about the Malifaux Crew Builder. Learning the Crew Builder or Army Builder of any game is always a challenge because it's something that everybody learns at the start, and you know, you kind of get left to find through how it works and, and where the various bits are and what they're for. So we thought we'd do a quick video just to explain it to everybody. Before we get into that, um, a quick discussion about something that's gone on with the Dice Gods recently. If you're enjoying the Malifaux Monday videos and the other videos we're putting out, we have recently launched a Patreon so that you can support us. That's a bit cheeky. We're a new channel. We've only been around six months. We're looking to expand, we're looking to grow and bring out more videos. And to do that, we need to improve our equipment. We also need to look at maybe outsourcing some of our video editing, because that's something that definitely slows us down. The Patreon is there to help us bring more stuff to you more regularly. Uh, Malifaux Mondays, for example, has recently had a unplanned hiatus due to work commitments. Will that happen again? I hope not, because we love doing these videos and we love playing Malifaux. But it could be a challenge. So if you can support us, that would be fantastic. If you can't, not a problem. We appreciate you liking, subscribing, and sharing our videos. But if you can support us, that would be fantastic and helps drive us towards bringing even more great videos to you guys and some other cunning plans that we have, plus exclusive content on Patreon. But that's enough shameless self-promotion. Let's get into the crew builder. The first thing we're going to talk about is this rules button just here. As the name implies, this contains the full rules for Malifaux, which is fantastic. It's a good reference, but not always the most efficient way to get around the rulebook, because as newbies, we find that the things that we don't remember are specific things like conditions or actions and terrain traits, which are conveniently listed under dropdowns over here. So when you're playing the game, rather than having to flick through the book, you can come in here click for disengage and find out how that actually works. The same for walk. If you've, if you've forgotten how walking works, you can find it here. But with things like conditions, this is really useful. What does slow do? These are referenced on the cards of your miniatures and they're not fully explained because you're going to do them enough that you'll remember. But not when you're a newbie. So having these here is an absolute godsend and really speeds up play. So remember these guys are here. It's really useful. The strategies, schemes, and deployments are useful at the start of the game. When you are a new player, we highly recommend that you go for the Henchman Hardcore version of the game, which kind of removes the need to know these and to have these as a reference. But as you start moving into the full game, these become more relevant. If you're not sure what Henchman Hardcore is, then please check out our video, link at the top there, uh, and that'll help you get into that fantastic way to learn and play this game. Next up. We're going to talk briefly about gaining grounds. Every year, uh, Weird Miniatures are bringing out a most expansion to Malifaux with new ways to play, new uh, strategies and schemes and deployments so that everything's fresh and interesting every year. It's called Gaining Grounds, and you can find the full details of it here, including the rule set and all the bits and pieces you need to know. Again, FAQ and Errata are also here if you want to dive in and see how the the rules have been clarified and amended uh, over the past period. So worth having, but for newbies, these conditions, general actions and terrain traits are a godsend. Next up, let's go back home. Cards. In here is a list of all of the cards, of all of the models and all of the upgrades in the game. There are 660. That is a lot. Why is this useful? When you build your crew, which we're going to do in a minute, you'll see that you get access to these cards anyway for your crew. I use this card reference for two things. One, so that I know what my opponent has. Rather than having to build a crew for them, I can just pop into here, look at the Neverborn, check out Aisling, who is a current thorn in my side. It's quite apt for what she is. And I can see her card and what she is and how she works. It helps being able to browse through all the different options for your opponent and see what they've got. And when you're actually playing as well, rather than have to ask them to see their card, you can just pop in here and take a look and, and be clear on what you're actually facing. 
this encyclopedia of the good guys, the bad guys, and everything in between is invaluable when you're playing. So keep this here. You've got the models on the left. They're different factions, which you can turn on and off. So at the moment it's showing all the factions. We can filter it down by 10 thunders. And then here's the good guys. We also have the upgrades. So again, this can be filtered by faction. And you can see the different options of upgrades which are available to a specific faction when you're playing them. Um, if they belong to something specific or someone specific, it will say it in here um, as a rule. So there you go. So that's the card section. The last thing I'm going to look at is the crews. So this is where you actually build your crews. Notice I'm leaving out settings and games. As newbies, don't worry about those yet. Time to play with those will come when you're a little bit more confident with these three sections. But let's look at our crews for a second. As you can see, this has got some of my, uh, I've got Yamaziko crew in here apparently. That's good. This is where you can build and work on your crews. So if we hit the plus button down here, we can select a faction. And then we can either select a master or a henchman. So if you were doing henchman hardcore, you can select, let's say, hmm, Toto, old favorite, and select into henchman hardcore mode. And we're now building a crew in henchman hardcore. So we have 20 of 30 possible soul stones left because henchman hardcore has a limit of 30 soul stones. And we can go into our hires and pick from the available ones for a Toto. When you open up the list of possible hires, you'll see that the top ones all have the same keyword, Last Blossom. That is because the henchman or the master that you selected has that keyword. So the crew builder helpfully puts those options that synergize well with that individual right at the top. You then get into your versatiles, which works to some extent, and then you get a list of it out of keyword. You can take out of keyword um, units in your crew, but they won't work as well. They're not designed to work with that master or they're not designed to work with that uh, particular henchman. And you do pay a fee because they're out of they're out of keyword, as you see. They get that plus one penalty. So in here, I'm just going to build my normal uh, list that I'm running at the moment. So as soon as I've got close to the 30 soul stones, it's ticked. I've got the maximum number of, not just the, the soul stones, I have the maximum number of um, of miniatures I can have in a henchman hardcore crew, because I'm allowed four. So this is now done. I have two soul stones left, which is great. This is ready to roll. That's all there is to it. Uh, if you drag and pull to the right, you get rid of them. And if you click on them, you'll see the card. Now this works the same pretty much if you are on the mobile version or the web version. Obviously I'm working on the web version because it's a lot easier to show you specifically what's going on. Um, but yeah, so you can just drag them out of the way. These reference cards will come into play when you're dealing with a little bit more exotic um, masters or henchmen. So let's give you an example of that. If I go back here and discard him for a minute. Let's build a new crew. I am going to do a henchman hardcore crew with Ray. Now, Ray has as one of her abilities, the ability to create a Katashiro. So that is a particularly unpleasant Oni. Let's have a look. There you go. So it's made out of paper of um, prayers that are left at a temple and then swept away in the rain and they gather in a drain and all the negativity and horribleness forms this particularly unpleasant Oni. Because Minako Rei can summon a Katashiro during her activation, you have the Katashiro as a reference. It's not something you've hired, but you can bring into existence. Likewise, I think she has certain point the ability to bring in a one iodo 
which I'm slaughtering the pronunciation, and I really look forward to fielding him on the table during a battle report so I can spend the whole time calling him various versions of Waniyodo, Waniyudu, Wanidudu, Dave, um, because she can also bring him into existence by her presence. He's listed in the reference cards. We still have the ability then to hire from the list as before. So, yeah. That is a brief overview of how the crew builder works. When you've done it in there, if you save it, it'll be here for your reference. So I've put a Yamaziko. This is another Hensman hardcore list that, spoilers, we might run on the uh, on the channel soon in a battle report. So Yamaziko, little bundle of joy that she is, is another henchman for Ten Thunders, and she can work with the Katanaka crime boss and the snipers. So these become the uh, minions for her, and we have a nice little henchman hardcore crew there. So I've got that for reference. I could use that when I'm playing if I want. Uh, obviously, you can play from this. Just open the cards and see that there if you don't want to put them on the table. But it's it's good to play around in the the. Another reason that I use the desktop version rather than the one on my phone is because the one on my phone has more crews than I care to mention, or that is healthy, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so there you go. Those are the three key areas of the crew builder for Malifaux that newbies need to know. Um, we hope that helps. It's, it took us a little bit of tinkering around and trying to figure out what was going on. Um, to get started and yes we know there's a lot more depth and detail with the sharing the editing and the various bits and pieces you can do with the the crew builder but it's always interesting that when you start a new system everyone goes there's the crew builder and then they sort of walk away and as a new player you're like okay what what is okay what does it do so we thought we'd give you a little bit of a guide and hopefully that helps some newbies get a bit of a better idea um, if you haven't got the, the crew builder already, you will find links in the description below to both the web version and the version for uh, smartphones. But for now, that is Manifo Monday. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, um, share, and uh, look forward to future videos on screen now is uh, the Patreon that we currently have. We have one already. Thank you so much, Mr. Rogers. So uh, yeah, if you want to see your name on there, as mentioned at the start of the video, please head over to Patreon and uh, support the channel going forward. With that, thanks for your time and we will see you again soon.